Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're tackling a problem, still in thermodynamics, but now ideal gas, closed system. And in this problem we have a rigid tank with oxygen, and we're increasing the energy in that tank, and we want to find out what is the work done by a paddle wheel that is a source of energy for everything that's happening in this problem. So first law of thermodynamics, that's what we need here to be able to solve it. And the problem statement reads, a 0.8 meters cubed rigid tank contains oxygen initially at 101 kilopascals and 27 degrees Celsius. A paddle wheel within the tank is rotated until the pressure inside rises to 140 kilopascals. During the process, 20 kilojoules of heat is lost to the surroundings. Determine the work done by the paddle wheel. So let's analyze this. First, know that this first sentence here is amazing, right? Because this first sentence pretty much says, you know, the first state is 100% defined, right? We can find, we can, uh, we know this uh, oxygen is a, an ideal gas. So therefore we can use the ideal gas uh, relationship to determine the mass of this guy. So we can find the mass from the get-go and we have the volume of the tank, we have the pressure in the tank, and we have the temperature in the tank. So, you know, all that we need is right here in this first sentence for the state number one. So let me go ahead and draw a little tank. Let me say that inside this tank I'm going to have oxygen. We know O2, right? It comes in molecules. And let me go ahead and draw my beautiful paddle wheel, like so. And this is my state one, right? This is what I'm calling state number one. State one. And then what's going to happen is this paddle wheel is going to spin. And as it's spinning, what it's doing is there's some energy. We don't know the energy source of this paddle wheel. It's electric, plug it in the wall, you know. But it's fact is it's spinning here. And that as it's spinning, what it's doing is giving away some energy to the oxygen, right? Energy in the form of work, right? And that's the whole point of this paddle wheel being here. We're giving some work, energy in the form of work to the fluid inside, which in this case here is oxygen. And then what happens is because this paddle wheel is giving some work, let's do this and let me put the work going in like so. Right? Let me put work going in like so. So let me remove this from state one. Because it's going in like so, what we end up happening is in state two is that we have a greater pressure. We actually go to 840 kilopascals over here. And we had 101 to start with, right? 101 to start with. Okay. So the question is how much energy, how much energy does a paddle wheel need to give? That's the, the, the whole thing is centered around that question. And then think about this. We have, let's, let's draw our energy states. It's in blue. Um, internal energy, right? State one, I infer that has a smaller energy. It's a smaller energy state because it's, it's at a smaller pressure, right? So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my state one is down here and I'm going to increase all the way to state number two over here. So I'm going from here to here, right? But while I'm going from one to one to two, I'm actually losing some heat. The heat I'm losing is 20 kilojoules. For the first law tells us, right? First law tells us delta U will be equal to heat and work. Note that no energy can be created or destroyed. If I need to go from a lower state of energy up to a higher state of energy, I need some energy to do that, right? I can create that. And also, if I'm losing energy, this energy is not, uh, sorry, if I'm losing heat, I'm, this energy is not coming in the form of heat. So therefore, it needs to be coming in the form of work. In this case, work done by the paddle wheel, right? So this is like the setup that we have. And if you haven't seen, there's a video that in which we talk all about, you know, the possibilities within the realm of the first law. So you can check that out to make sure that you are on top of things. Okay, so guess what? The work of the paddle wheel needs to be sufficient to account for the difference in internal energy, this increase in internal energy that we observe here from state one to state two, plus which whatever energy is being lost due to heat, right? The last thing to note is this work, right, in question, this guy here is work from the paddle wheel, right? Specifically from the paddle wheel. This is not work done by the Gas, right? Not done, work by, done by um, the oxygen. So we don't have a, a piston cylinder system here in which, you know, this oxygen is going to push the system upwards or the atmosphere is going to push the oxygen downwards. That's not the case, right? It's the work specifically done by the paddle wheel. So if I were to rewrite the first law, it will be this, right? The work 
then by the panel wheel needs to be equal to the Q loss of the surroundings plus the change in internal energy observed as we go from state one to state two. What is the game plan? Well, we know this from the start. This is 20 kilojoules, all good. This is what we're trying to find out. And this guy we can find out because, well, guess what? Oxygen is an ideal gas. We can use the ideal gas relationship to find out what is the mass. We can use that to find out what's the temperature T2, and we can use specific heat to find out what's the change in enthalpy, right? With the change in enthalpy, we're good to go. We grab that change, sorry, in internal energy, not enthalpy. To change in internal energy, we can grab that from our specific heat and then combine that with the 20 kilojoules and we have the energy given by the paddle wheel All right so game plan is let's first so if, oh, let's just put it down here first thing we're going to do is find out what is uh, t2 uh the mass maybe the mass first mass uh, of oxygen okay equal to then i'm going to go ahead and find what is t2 temperature in the second state and then i'm going to go ahead and find what is my delta u once I have my delta u, then I'm going to use my delta u. Let's put number for you. I'm going to use my delta u to find out what is the work done by the paddle wheel. That's my game plan. All right. Beautiful. Um, mass, mass of the oxygen. So we know that if it's an ideal ga gas, it needs to respect the relationship that PV equals nRT. I always want to say this just because I'm not sure if you're watching this for the first time or if you watched previous videos here, but this guy here can be either number of moles or the mass. It depends on which r you are using okay depending on the unit of the r you're using it's going to be mass if it's a specific um constant for that specific uh, gas in this case oxygen if you're using the general one it's going to be moles all right if i want to find the mass well i need to solve for the mass it's easy peasy so it's just going to be pressure volume divided by r and t okay pressure is 101 and this is kilopascals let's put the units on here and then we have 0 0.8 meters cubed and then we're dividing that. I'm going to grab the R in the table in a second. Uh, where is the table? Here it is. Um, constant. I'm looking for oxygen. Here it is. Oxygen. Boom. There you go. All right. So I'm going to grab this number here because this is going to give me precisely the mass. Right. So this is the specific R, specifically for oxygen. Okay. And I know the units. Kilojoules per kilograms per Kelvin. Okay. 0.2598. All right, and kilojoules per kilograms per Kelvin. And over here, this is 27, yeah, 27 Celsius, but I need it in Kelvin, so I'm going to go ahead and um, convert. This is going to be 27 plus, well, it's going to be 300, but 27 plus 273, and that's going to be in Kelvin. So just unit-wise, let's just check what's going on here. Uh, Kelvin is in Kelvin, that's easy. Then we know that a Pascal multiplied by meters cubed, that's going to give me a joule, all right? So I have kilopascal, so it's going to be kilojoules. And then we have kilojoules down here. And then we have the kilogram dividing. That's going to go up, multiplying. It's dividing the division, goes multiplying. So we're going to get the answer in kilograms. All right. And um, I got this to be about 1.04 kilograms. Correct? So this is the mass. That was my part one. Part two, let's find out what is part two. Let's go ahead and find out what is the... Uh, T2, remember? T2. So T2, what's the idea? Well, I'm going to apply this kind of twice, right? Um, let's think of it this way. If I'm not losing or gaining any mass, then this needs to hold true whether this is P1, V1, T1, or whether this is P, oops, one more, P2, V2, T2, or 3, or 4, or 5. It doesn't matter, right? So therefore, I can say that my P1 times my V1 needs to be equal to my oops, D1, needs to be equal to my P2 times my V2 divided by my T2. Well, guess what? It's a rigid tank, so the volumes are the same, and they therefore don't matter here. So if I want T2, all I need to do, if I'm looking for T2, is multiply P1, uh, divide P1 by P1 by two, E2, and T1. That's all I need to do. Is that right? Let me just ensure that, no, I flipped it. Sorry. Um, over there, so P2. And then T1, and then divided by P1. Okay, beautiful. All right, I know everything, so that's easy peasy. Um, what was it? 140. 140 divided by 101 times my. I'm gonna leave it in. in um, I'm gonna leave it in Kelvin because then it, can, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna get the unit that you choose here. 
I don't want to leave in Kelvin just for the sake of it. Right, unit wise, know that we have kilopascals here, kilopascals here, so they both go away, and whatever unit you chose for the temperature is going to be the unit you're going to get your T2 in. And I got 415.8, and this this needs to be Kelvin because 300 is in Kelvin. Okay, and now why why did I grab this? Well, because now I can relate my C sub P, right? C sub P or C sub V, depending on what I want. And you why you will remember from previous videos that C sub P is defined as the rate at which my uh, enthalpy changes in respect to temperature, and C sub V is the rate at which my internal energy changes in respect to temperature. Okay. So in this case, well, it's, it's even a constant volume process, so you can think about that, that way too, but that might confuse some people. So let's just always think about the definition so you never go wrong. So if I'm after my C sub V because I want the internal energy, then this is a column I'm looking for, and I'm going to read things off oxygen. So this is a number that I'm interested in. 0 0.658, 0 0.658. So C, E for oxygen is 0.658. Okay, and this is kilojoules per kilograms per Kelvin. Okay, note the definition. So this means that my C sub V dt will be, and if I integrate here and here, then this right side here is going to become my delta u, which is what I'm looking for. Now this left side here, we talked about this before. This depends, right? This is going to be depend on the level of accuracy you're trying to get off this problem. All right. If you are, um, there's three ways to do it. If you are just wanting an approximation, then you can go ahead and use a single value for CV. That should be fine because CV varies with temperature. If you want a bit, a better, um, a better value at the end, what you're going to do is you're going to grab what's the CV at 300 and also what's the CV at 415, which is our other temperature. And then you grab the average and you use that average. If not, then we're going to have to integrate over the whole dt so that we can grab a precise cv all right in this problem i'm going to go ahead and approximate and just use a single value here so i'm going to say this is going to be um let me do this this is going to be approximately cv delta t okay and then this is equal to the three Yeah, just making my life easier. We can do it later if you want with the um, other values and compare. Let me know in the comment section if that's something that you think would be helpful. So this is 0 0.658. This is 415.8 minus 300. That's a difference in temperature we're observing. And that's what we're after, right? That's the delta U we're after. I actually used a similar value. And then I'm going to go ahead, and this is like the lowercase one, right? So if I want the uppercase one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to multiply this by the mass. So I'm just going to put two lines here to imply this is the uppercase one. I'll just make it bigger, I guess. And then I multiply it by the mass, which is 1.04. And over here, I got approximately 80.5-ish. Uh, 80.5-ish. So... Kilojoules. Okay. Now note the. Let me just put this. Know that this. If I were to do this math here, I would get it in kilojoules per kilogram, right? Kilojoules per kilogram. Here I'm multiplying by the kilogram, so I get rid of the kilograms and I'm left with kilojoules. That's my delta u. Okay. What's the final? What's the final um, piece of the puzzle? Well, the final piece of the puzzle is the paddle wheel is doing a combination of um, the heat loss and this approximation here. So therefore, the paddle wheel is going to give me the energy of the paddle wheel will be Q plus, plus my delta U, as we said before. And that's going to be the 80 plus the 20. So that's going to be about 100, right? So this is going to be about 100.5. And that will be my answer right there. That's the amount of energy the paddle wheel needs to give in the form of work for this guy to be able to increase its internal energy and to account for the heat that's lost during the process. Okay. Uh, all right, so moving on. What if, what if uh, over here, I wanted to do the second approximation. Okay.
what if I want to do the section approximation? Well, then what I would do is, like I said, I'm going to get um, the bulk temperature. So what's my, or average temperature, average, yeah, average temperature. So that's going to be 415.8 plus 300 divided by 2, which will give me 357.9. Kelvin, all right, and I'm going to take the CV over here because now I'm not using the CV of 300, which was the one that we used before, but I'm actually using those CV for uh, the number of, uh, that's the bulk temperature, the average temperature, so between the two extremes, right? And if I do that, you're going to see that if you look at the table, property table, look, put the temperature here, see it's up here, we don't have one for 357, but we will have one for 350, and we have one for three, uh, sorry, 400. Okay, this one here is 666. Eight. This one here is six eight one. So if I want the one four three five seven point nine, I'm going to have to interpolate again. Vito's interpolating here. What is an internal interpolation? How to do it? You can find in the channel. And I got out of this point uh, sixty seven approximately kilojoules per kilograms per kelvin. Okay. And then what we do here is we just approximate it. Oh, sorry, not approximate, but we do the same process that we did here, right? It's the same idea. We're going to do, oh, okay. So if I'm looking for my lowercase delta u, then that's just going to be the c sub v times my delta t. In this case, here it's going to be the 0.67 times the 415.8 minus 300. And that's going to give me a number in kilojoules per kilograms. And if I'm looking for uppercase u, which is what we need in this problem, we really don't have an option because we need to combine this with the um, we need to combine this with the uh, heat, right? The heat being lost. So we're going to multiply this by the one oh four. And what I got was eighty point seven. And this is in kilojoules. Okay, so very similar to the one we found before. And then obviously we'd still do. Okay, so therefore the work in the paddle wheel will just be whatever was lost during the process plus the in increase in internal energy observed. And this is going to be 20 plus 80.7. That's just 100.7 because they're both in the same unit, so we can sum them up. All right, so this is a different way of doing it. Again, it depends on the level you're in. What's the level of um, how strict your uh, class is, what your professor expects. So it depends if you can do the approximation over here without having to do the average and just go ahead and do the value for 300 or if you can't you have to take the average or even if you need to integrate all the way which i don't think is going to be your case all right so i hope this helped you out if you have any questions as per usual just leave them down below and i'll try to address them if this video has helped you out just like the video helps the channel and we'll talk soon